Welcome to a very hastily thrown together Council of Geeks, as you can see from my lack of shaving, but uh, uh, a bazillion announcements have come out of DC and Warner Brothers in regards to DC properties hitting the big screen, and we can't not talk about this. I think, I think we need to real quickly run down the list of everything and ask, because I have a feeling we're going to be jumping around. So it's Suicide Squad 2016. Yep. Uh, 2017 will be Wonder Woman, and then Justice League. Part one. Part one, okay. Uh, 2018 is The Flash and Aquaman. Okay. Um, 2019 is Shazam and Justice League Part 2. Yeah. And 2020, are we up there? Yeah. Is Cyborg, Cyborg and a Green Lantern reboot. I'm just remembering that, you know, shortly before Spider-Man came out, Sony made their announcement, we're going to have a Spider-Man movie every year. Yes. In addition to the proper sequels, we're going to have Sinister Six and Venom, and we'll do a female spinoff at some point. And then Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out, and the world collectively went, nah. We don't want that. Yeah, and, and they have done so much backpedaling since then. And if Dawn of Justice doesn't connect, they've, they've got five years worth of announced features. They're all of a sudden going to be going, uh. Even if a lot of fans did not accept Man of Steel, they just they had to dig in. They're like, we can't wait two years and try this again. We'll, we'll try and improve as we go. So I suppose it, it makes the most sense to talk order of release. Suicide Squad. Which I assumed would be a TV show because they've already introduced all of those characters in Arrow and it sounded like they were setting it up for a spinoff. This is the same concern that I have with what they're doing with The Flash, which is that you're doing literally the same thing in movies at the same time that you're doing it yeah. on TV. I, I mean, this is something that we brought up when we talked about Gotham. I, I liked the fact that it was completely different from any version of Batman that would right. be done on film. Right. It's the same reason they got away with having Smallville while trying to get Superman back right. on the big screen. It was not the same thing. It wasn't even close. Right. But they've got The Flash on TV. Just started this year. Yes. And they're going to have The Flash in his own movie. And I yes. can't imagine it's going to be all that different in terms of premise or approach. Are we going to be forced to say, well, what is the real Flash? The real live, er version, live action version of The Flash? Is it the movie or is it the TV show? The other thing with the, with the Suicide Squad, it immediately rings the bell of Sony and the Sinister Six. Yes. To be fair, um, there is more precedent for the Suicide Squad holding their own as a story than the Sinister Six. Yeah. With the right approach and the right tone, I think Suicide Squad could be a very fun movie that will attract a lot of people who might not get excited for traditional superhero movies. I think you could approach a Suicide Squad movie like a Mission Impossible meets Ocean's Eleven with people in garish costumes and knives and guns and stuff like that. And that might be very fun and very entertaining. The Wonder Woman movie comes out the next year after Dawn of Justice. So they will be filming that Wonder Woman movie before Dawn of Justice yeah. is in theaters. So, so. so if Dawn of Justice comes out and the world goes, we don't like that Wonder Woman, they're screwed. Let's be fair. They have one up to Marvel in announcing a female-led superhero movie, which Marvel still has yet to do. They've said they're going to take the New 52 origin for yeah. Wonder Woman, which I have some issues with. If they just use her adjusted origin, she's the daughter of Zeus, which I don't like, but right. you know they've got that. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. But if they take on board the other aspect of the New 52, which is that she gets romantically paired off with Superman, mm -hmm. I, I, I might lose my crap and just assault the, the movie screen. That one still image of Wonder Woman explained a lot of my reservations about the character and their approach to her. She's holding a sword. Mm -hmm. I don't like Wonder Woman with a sword. It is inherently a lethal weapon. It is an instrument of killing and death. And I think, you know who would have a problem with that? Batman and Superman. Now, if she's fighting monsters all the time, I would be okay with. But there was something always likable about the lasso in that it was an instrument of domination, but also a sort of, it, it was non-lethal. It was about connecting and sort of forcing people to see evil in themselves. In terms of willfully deciding to kill someone, mm -hmm. she's got a higher body count than either Batman or Superman. Sure, she, she does. And I've actually always kind of liked that about her is that she is more willing to bend on that rule. It'd be very easy to overplay that, and that would be a problem. 
but and that's and and that's my favorite. And, and I I agree with that. She is from a warrior culture. She has different values than either Superman or Batman. And I think she would say no. The quickest way to defuse the situation is to just cut the head off. I still think she would see it as a last resort. Touching back on her getting paired off with Superman, I. I suppose I, the one thread that I can hold on to that maybe that won't happen is that they did clearly set him up with Lois Lane in Man of Steel. Yeah. Now, if they kill off Lois Lane in Dawn of Justice, then then you know they're pairing her him up with Wonder Woman. It's just it's such a bad coupling. That neither of them benefit from a Superman Wonder Woman coupling. Yeah, she looks inferior. He's literally the one human being on the planet that they could pair her with that she is not the power in that right. She is always in his shadow. And yeah. Wonder Woman should never be in the shadow of any man. No. After Wonder Woman. After Wonder Woman. In 2017 now, we have the first Justice League movie. It's been officially announced as part one and part two. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing I'm scratching my head over for a couple reasons. The first is they're having a two-year gap. You know, setting aside how creatively bankrupt you may or may not feel it is to break a single story into two parts, whenever it's done, part one and part two are released within a year or less of each other. If it, if it is truly part one and part two of the same story, mm -hmm. why are you putting two years between them? The leaks right now are indicating Brainiac in part one, right. Darkseid in part two. Those don't sound like two halves of the same story. Those sound like two different stories, so why are you calling it part one and part two? Those are very similar villains and very similar threats. Two alien beings threatening to take over the world. Those well, I, well, actually, it'll it'll be your second and third ones because coming off of Zod, right? So, I which, mean, which apparently the latest rumor that I read yesterday is that Zod's corpse will be a big part of. The I, read I read that. I read that this morning. All all I can make of that is that Lex Luthor is going to reanimate the corpse, and that will be Bizarro Superman. <laughs> One thing that I am somewhat cautiously optimistic about is there is an element of their approach to these Justice League movies that I do like. Um, and it's different than what Marvel is doing with their Avengers movies, which is releasing one every three years or every two years and making it just a standalone movie. Is that you don't tell three different standalone Justice League movies. You tell one big epic adventure spread out over three movies, more like The Lord of the Rings. Um, and the first movie to give it room to breathe would just be Superman and Batman meeting for the first time. And I thought if you release it over three years as three chunks of one bigger scale story, that would be something that is at least different than what Marvel is, is doing. Yeah. So it sounds like they, they're that, kind that, of doing that's that. That's I mean, sort of the mentality. They're, they're filming them back to back. They started off with a Superman Batman team up and they're building the Justice League from that. So after 2017, after, yes. 2018, we'll have. The standalone Flash movie that we've talked about. Yep. Presumably he, he will be in the first Justice League. Well, he, he would have to be in the, in um, the there, first there Justice League. There's been rumored for a long time that he would be in Dawn of Justice. I don't think that's the case anymore. They did announce that he's already been cast. So I would not be surprised if he shows up pre-becoming the Flash. Right. I, I don't know which version. I'm going to say Barry Allen. He's the best known. But right. Who, who, may, may, and maybe that's how they'll, they'll try and get away with a different movie. Because the TV will be Barry Allen. Maybe they'll do Wally West for the movie or right. whatever. Regardless, whoever he is, I have a feeling we'll meet that person right. briefly. We'll get Flash proper in Justice League. After The Flash, we will get our Aquaman movie. Yes. Um, starring Jason Momoa as Prince Namor, the Submariner. <laughs> I am an Aquaman fan. But there was a big part of his history in the comics where he was kind of an angry, marauding Viking. When you cast the guy who's best known recently for playing an angry, marauding Viking, <laughs> I worry that they're not going to deliver the Aquaman that I would prefer. So after that, Shazam. Yes, yeah, um, which has The Rock as Black Adam. He had long sort of been sought after for that role because he looks like Black Adam. He, he's sort of picture perfect. I I would have been fine with him actually playing Captain Marvel or Shazam, the main character, because there is a lovable, like, charming quality to The Rock. When he smiles, it lights up the room. I actually think he's a better actor than he has even allowed himself to be. I would... So I, w I would really like to see him stretch his legs and go really... Fiercely villainous. Mm -hmm. yeah. The scriptwriter or the director, whoever they, they've been talked to, has said that Shazam tonally will not sort of reflect the darkness of Man of Steel and what we've seen of these so, movies. You, Shaz it, it, it'll be allowed to be fun? 
Oh my god! <laughs> Shazam is about wish fulfillment. It's about an orphan kid who gets to be the mightiest mortal on earth. It's that that should be a movie that all ages can see. Yes. Other concerns that I have about this property. If, so if they end up introducing Shazam into Justice League Part Two, I, I'm not interested in Shazam fighting or teaming up with Superman. Um, that's just they, not. They, they're very redundant. If anything, it's like, oh, I can do what Superman can do. Also, lightning. So Justice League Two will also come out in 2019. Um, if Darkseid is the villain, um, I think he's a pretty one-note invader, kind of cosmic god of evil and war. The Avengers, it has been said, it like beat DC to the same premise like years ago because the first Avengers movie had an alien invasion yes. from another dimension. Yeah. And it had the main villain stealing people's souls and brainwashing them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of Dark Side's shtick. Marvel's got the jump on that too with with Thanos because if we're being fair, Thanos was literally designed as a knockoff of Dark Side. Mm -hmm. But mainstream won't care about the history. They'll care about who they saw first, right. and they saw Thanos first. I think, and Thanos, if he is still the big bad of Avengers three. That's probably going to come out in 2018, a year before Darkseid shows up in Justice League 2. Yeah. The last two movies, Cyborg. Cyborg. Now, you already said that DC beat Marvel to the punch by announcing the first villain, or the, the first, sorry, the first, first woman, woman superhero. Cyborg would be, as far as we know, unless unless Marvel beats them with a Black Panther movie, like of sort of the modern era, yeah. uh, Cyborg would be the first. Now, I, 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 have, I have a feeling that that fact played in heavily to the idea of even doing this as, as a movie. Well, the guy doesn't even have his own comic. No. Um, they have really been building his popularity over the last couple years. There is a lot of logic behind his character today. He is a technology-based hero. He is all about cybernetics and cyberspace, and that is the world we live in today. He could tap into a kind of a, a cultural zeitgeist at the right time and be an unexpected super popular hit. You can look at it as, well, they're just going for diversity for the sake of diversity, um, but who cares if it, if it still ends up bringing a needed diversity to it. After Cyborg, we get the much-needed Green Lantern reboot. There have been several Green Lanterns throughout the comic history that they could choose to focus on. I would like right. to see Jon Stewart. Well, yeah. Okay. Now, if it is John Stewart, then both of DC's movies will be will star black superheroes. Yes. In 2020. Yeah. That would be an interesting. Or they could have Hal Jordan pass the lantern or pass the ring on to either Guy Gardner or Kyle Rayner. With Guy, you have more of a arrogant, macho, like hard-headed guy. Or Kyle would be closer to the Peter Parker type of character. Yeah. They may have a have a hard enough desire to invalidate the the Green Lantern movie that they may reboot Hal Jordan just so they can say that never happened. And I would be fine with that because Hal Jordan is my preferred Green Lantern. The movie will come out ten years after the last after the last Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. Green Lantern was twenty eleven, and this will be twenty twenty. That might be enough time for the audience to have just forgotten or deliberately wiped their minds. If they opt not to reboot Hal Jordan and they bring in somebody else, they kind of can't use Sinestro. Right. Because Sinestro, while he's been around for other right. other Green Lanterns, he, he's Hal Jordan's villain. Right. Ultimately. Right. Honestly, it's what they should have done in the first one. Instead, they opted for what they did. <laughs> Cloud Monster. Yeah. Because it worked great for the second Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> oh, yes. Iconic. Yeah. Um, it's it's funny. Talking it out, there are, there are more potential bright spots in this announcement than, than when I first tried to wrap my head around it and my brain just kind of melted. Okay, I, I, I'm pulling for it to work, but I can see a lot of points where like, it just if that screw is loose at all, the whole thing's just gonna go the Yeah, the difference is if Marvel Studios unveiled their five-year plan with 10 movies locked down, we would say, cool, we're excited for all of them. And Marvel has earned that. Everything right. hinges on Dawn of Justice. Right. And this I is was... their one shot to sell to us that they can make this work. Right. They're, they're, bas they're basically opting to make the Avengers as their second right. film. These are characters that I love. These are characters that I have wanted to see in movies for most of my life. The problem is they're all sort of blossoming out of one movie that I hated. <laughs> And that has sort of tarnished my expectations for what I will get. 
I am morbidly curious about Dawn of Justice. And unfortunately, because that's the entry point for everything else, it's hard for me to get any level of excitement for anything that is supposed to spring out of that beyond just a theoretical, I would like a Wonder Woman movie. That is a fact, regardless of who is in it, I would like one. But I start looking at the specifics of what I look to be getting, and then my expectations start... It, 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 it's like a souffle deflating. I think for now, that's, that's about all we have the energy for. So thank you for joining us. And until next time, this council is adjourned. Thank you.